Don't forget to follow Grit Daily News as well as me, your host, Laurel and Mears, everywhere on social media. And how about throwing four or five stars our way if you're listening to Apple or Spotify? Subscribe to our show. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the formerly known as Like a Boss podcast, now branded as, in season three, The Grit Files, Startup Stories. Today, we're not only going to get gritty, we're going to get a little sexy with our host and guest. I'm the host, Laurelyn, and our guest, see, I'm already flustered and a little nervous. Woo-hoo-hoo. <laughs> We've, we're going to talk about some taboo stuff like sex with Jim Neist. He is the founder and creator of an amazing new game called Halos and Sins, which is all about normalizing sex and your play style, helping you and your partner, be it a new partner or a partner that you've had for some time, level up together and figure out what it is that you want out of your sexual relationship and to give you the tools and the boundaries and all of the bits that you need to be able to, well, make it comfortable and talk about it and experience joy and pleasure together. Hey, Jim. Hey, uh, thanks so much for having me on your podcast. Well, I don't want to steal your thunder here, but you've got quite the app there. In fact, when I go to the app store, I don't see stuff like this on here. So talk to us about the impetus behind this app and all that you're doing to really normalize sex and help partners identify how that they can enjoy sex together. Sure. Yeah. Um, so I've actually been working on this game for about five years now. Um, I am the only developer and um, it's just been an amazing journey uh, creating this, this app. It, there's nothing out there that does what my app does. Um, there's a lot of, uh, if I had to describe the game, it's, it's dirty sex dice meets aspects of World of Warcraft or Final Fantasy or Shadows of Mordor. Um, and when I say aspects, I mean games with like a talent tree and choice progression. Um, as you and your, um, the person you're playing with progress in the game, you gain levels and experience by doing different naughty, sexy actions. Uh, and you get to choose if you want to go to the left, which is the nice angelic play style, or you can go to the right, which is the succubus play style. Or you can choose some balanced play style of the two, where you kind of get you kind of get a mix of the actions. Um, and as you level up, your the actual the gameplay will change and give you actions that reflect your preferences. So. And now, you know, for all of the because there's naysayers on every topic out there and trolls yeah. and all the rest of that, right? The scourge of social media that is. Anyway. Are people saying, ooh, this isn't appropriate. I want to make sure my child never has anything to do with this. I think it's only designed for very mature and consenting adults. How do you work around all of that? Well, I made sure to, um, to uh, when, when you uh, upload the game, right now, currently the game is on Google Play. Um, it is available. It's, it's free to download. Um, it's freemium. So it's free to download and you can purchase in-app um, items in the game. Um, and there, there is a required field where you have to set the age limit and you have to answer a bunch of questions about the game. So it is definitely, um, it is definitely an 18 plus game. Um, I haven't gotten any uh, negative feedback yet about, um, um, did you say um, younger, younger people playing? Was that the question? Right. Because there's, there's always a troll, someone that's saying, oh, you're trying to force the sexuality, you know, of my child potentially, or you're trying to make this available and you're tainting a child's perception of what is sex or what is healthy sex. Whereas what you're really doing is normalizing it and helping couples grow together with no judgment on heterosexuality, gender, any of that, it's designed to bring, you know, new tools of conversation into the bedroom or into wherever it is that you're having fun. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I try to warn as, in as many places as possible, this is 18 plus only. And it's, it's, I think in uh, two or three places it should be. And, and when you start up the game, it even has, uh, it has a, a warning. So 
Perfect. So you've got all that stuff covered. So see, hey, attorneys and everybody out there, we've got it <laughs> our eyes. We've crossed our T's. Now let's get gritty. Let's go. Yes. How did the concept for Halos and Sins come up? Oh, that is an excellent question. Um, so um, I'm a huge Dungeons and Dragons nerd, and um, I, I'm really into stats and um, and like customizing um, characters and, and players. And um, I, I, want, I asked the question, I was like, well, what would happen if I combined the level progression and stats of Dungeons and Dragons with uh, a sex dice game? And there's a ton of sex dice games out there, but they're always very basic. Um, they usually lack in quality a bit. Um, and I really wanted to deliver a high quality product, which I have that combines um, the aspects, the, the leveling progression of like, like I said, like World of Warcraft or Final Fantasy or Shadows of Mordor uh, or Dungeons and Dragons. And as you level, um, it changes your gameplay and it changes your, your experience. And um, I have an amazing product out there now. And as we we're, we're actually looking to get Kickstarter funding um, and as we get more uh, Kickstarter funding um, going forward, uh, Kickstarter will be launching in a few months. And once we get more Kickstarter funding, we'll really be able to um, you know, find out what people are liking about the game more, um, you know, what people want to see more of and really, really get a really high quality product out there. Excellent. Now I'm going to do a little sidebar because sure. as gaming nerds and all this, you've brought up a few names. Mm -hmm. What is your favorite game and favorite character in that game? We just, the audience is going to be curious. You know that. <laughs> Jeez, that is a really tough one. Um... I probably have to say um, Final Fantasy VII and Cloud is, is my favorite, um, just mostly for the cool factor. But there's so many amazing uh, characters out there. Um, I'd have to I'd have to think about that. Um, I really like um, in in Metroid. I like uh, I like Samus. I think I think she's a really cool protagonist. And uh, if you if you ever played the original Metroid. Um, getting to the very end of the game you 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 finally realize like her, her helmet fades away and you you realize for the first time that it's a, it's a girl you've been playing the whole time and you're just like what this is great <laughs> so but she's it's, it's a great game love that this is little twists okay back yeah. to the podcast here and so yeah. <laughs> you've been developing this for five years and typically when startup founders are on their journey what they thought they were building when they started is not what it is some years later. So can you tell us what's changed, not only about what you've built, but about yourself, what's changed? Yeah, that's an, that's an excellent question. Um, yeah, over, over the course of the five years, I've really learned a lot about myself as a CEO and I've developed a lot of like management skills. Um, I've had to learn, you know, had to have some, some difficult conversations, but also some really fun conversations. Um, and it's just been a really good journey and, and every part of my experience has led me to this point and I'm able to deliver such an amazing product and I'm, I'm so excited to share it with everyone. And I really wanted to help people is, is the, is the core of what I want to do. So did I answer your question or was it? Sure, was it no, we're good. We're good. We're, and we'll yeah. just keep rolling here. And so yeah. on any journey, mm -hmm. life, entrepreneurship, whatever it is. There's always something, some big obstacle that we didn't see coming. And then, you know, we hit the wall. Yeah. Tell us what in your life and path so far has thrown you for a really big loop. Mm. Yeah. So the, the game itself has pretty much month to month has, there's been extra loops. I've had to teach myself how to use unity, um, which is a software development uh, platform, which is what the game is made with. Um, I've had to figure out, you know, dealing with contractors and um, working with different personalities. Um, I've had to, yeah, I've, there's, so there's been a lot of loops thrown at me. Um, but again, it's, it's all been a positive experience. Um, it's all led me back to the point I'm at now. Um, I think if I had to say like one of the biggest loops that I've been thrown for um, this is the third version of the game. The very first version of the game was very engineer, very like it was obviously made by an engineer. It didn't have good graphics. It didn't have good uh, user interface. Um, and I got a lot of uh, feedback on it that people were just like, hey, this, this isn't really playable or I don't understand what's happening here. Um, 
So I went back to the drawing board and I did another version and I eventually got a user experience person, but I wish I had have gotten that person earlier on in the process because then it would have shortened um, a lot of development time on my end. Um, and it, it, uh, it wouldn't have wasted some art that I, that I uh, had, had made for me. So, but you know, again, like I said, it, it's all been part of the process. It's all helped me learn um, and get to the point I'm at now where we have a, a beautiful product. Um, the, one of the main artists for the game actually worked on uh, Farmville. So um, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it looks really nice and it plays really nice. Excellent. Now you kind of jumped maybe ahead to one of the questions that I do oh, like to ask, I guess. <laughs> well, no, no, it's all right. Cause maybe it's a different answer, but yeah. if I gave you this magical undo button, Jim, and said, you got to go back in your life and change one thing personally, professionally, doesn't matter, whatever you're comfortable sharing, what are you going to undo? Yeah, I think on this process, on the, on the Halos and Sins development side, I, I definitely would have gone back and um, get, hired a U user experience person earlier on in the process. Um, but, you know, at the time I didn't know like what was the process, like what is the correct order of operations? Like, um, you know, you generally speaking, you wanna hire a design person, the user experience person, and then you hire a user interface person. And then, uh, you know, you get artists and who can match the style that you choose. So that's probably what I would have gone back and changed about the game. Well, it's all a learning process, right? This is part of the whole path with entrepreneurship. You don't know what you don't know until the thing's on fire and you're going, oh, okay, <laughs> now what? How do I put this damn thing out? Yeah, yeah, definitely. If I asked you and said, okay, I'm an alien, let's be science nerds, and you're telling me why I need to download this game, what are you telling me? <laughs> well, are you an alien that, uh, needs to experience that um, has a sex drive or are you kind of an asexual alien? I guess I would ask back. I'm an alien that has a sex drive. Yeah, okay. we'll put that out there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, it could help. It could help anyone. Um, I, I don't know about aliens. I'd really have to give that a bit more thought, but depending on, you know, their preferences, um, it could help anyone learn more about themselves um, and explore uh, which sexual path they want to go down. You know, somebody can have uh, in, in real life, they can have a personality where they're very, very um, timid, maybe like in, in, in the real world. Um, but we're not trying to get at that with this game. We're really trying to get at what is your sexual play style? Uh, like what, what is your underlying sexual play style? So they, they may be timid in the real world, but in the bedroom, they may be like an aggressive dominant person. Um, and you can really uncover something like that um, with you and your partner playing the game. You, you opened the podcast talking about data analytics and you're a bit of a data wonk on that side. So you must see all kinds of interesting patterns. Do people tend to stick more to the halo side of things where they want their pleasure a little bit softer, not so out there, or do people vacillate between the, you know, the center side of things and then the halo just sort of depends on the mood or do people always arc right where, Hey, it's devil style aggression, full dominatrix or else. Yeah, you, it sounds like you have a really good grasp of kind of how the game works. Um, I'm not yeah. saying I play or don't play. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you don't, I recommend it. Um, yeah, if, uh, I actually don't have that information available, so I, I can't answer that question. Um, I Anecdotally, I think people might tend to go more the succubus route, but I don't know... And I can only base that on uh, feedback from testers that have given me uh, feedback on the game, like my beta testers. Um, and there's been over 200 beta testers so far. So it's, it's, very, it's very solid, very well locked down. Um, I have a, my writer actually, she's written uh, 60 romance novels. So she is quite talented and she's done some amazing stuff with the copy. So, um, but yeah, to answer your question, I, I, I don't have that information handy. So I can't really speculate, but maybe succubus, I guess would be my guess. Okay. Well, yeah. you know, there's a little yeah. naughty side to all of us, right? Mm -hmm. And we just don't have the tools or the vocabulary or whatever it is to express ourselves in that way. And apps like Halos and Sins, games, all this kind of stuff, be it cardboard, traditional in real world versus digital world games can help bring that out. That's part of why they exist. Part of why there's yeah. a big multi-billion dollar market for it. 
Yeah, and it's like as you as we talked about earlier, it's sex topics are taboo, and I really want to help people be more comfortable with talking about it and being okay with learning about it for themselves. Um, and sometimes you got to explore. So you know, there's there's new decks out there you can purchase um, and try out new actions, and there's always new decks coming out. Um, if I can plug here just a little bit, uh, there is uh, right now. Here's a tough question. What's your kryptonite? What breaks you down, Jim? Um, that's an excellent question. Um, I think the, the, the biggest struggle has been in the last 10 months, I've really started doing marketing and I've had, I'm a, my, my background is a, as a, I'm a developer. Um, I worked at a medical company for six years, um, dealing with patient safety and alarms. And, and that was intriguing, but then I decided to go off on my own and do this, uh, project. Um, my kryptonite is probably I um, having to context switch a lot. So like it's really been a learning experience. So I have to manage people and deal with um, uh, people, my contractors, and then I have to wrench my brain over and do write code. And that's actually quite difficult. I think that was that's probably been the most uh, difficult thing that I've had to deal with. So I really had to, you know, organize myself and figure out like what you know, what's the best way to approach it. So I started giving myself like office, office hours and then, you know, time where I could develop. And then, um, so it's, it's worked out and, and I've learned a lot about myself. Um, but, uh, it's, it's definitely been a, it was definitely a journey getting to the point where it's like, oh, Hey, you know, I, I need to limit my context switching per day. Otherwise I'm just, it's just gonna drive me batty. So <laughs> I encountered that as well. And try to uphold time blocking it doesn't always work because something's on fire when you don't expect it. And then you just mm -hmm. got to kind of drop everything in your plan, which is amazing goes out the window in about 2.5 seconds, but there you go. Maybe you have a message for other developers because you're not the first software developer to create their own software and code and app. What's that message for software developers as an entrepreneur now? Yeah. And, and if, if you have any questions, you could, uh, any developer or anyone who wants to reach out, I would, I would love to talk to people and get any feedback they have or any questions they have. Um, my job here is to help people. Um, but your, your question about what, what I would suggest for developers, um, I would say that you know, just create the game, get it out there, get like a version one out there as fast as you can, you know, do, don't, don't worry about, um, maybe everything's not perfect. You know, the code might not be the most, um, like super sparkling code, but then you can go back and you can revisit the code. Um, and, but get, get something out there, get some eyeballs on it, get people looking at it. And, um, I know a lot of indie developers have a problem. They think that the games are just going to go viral overnight. Um, so I would recommend definitely getting a marketing team um, because you because most likely your game is not going to go viral overnight. It may, and I hope, and that would be amazing. I, that would be amazing if it did, but most likely it won't. So um, you know, get a get a mark, get a good marketing team together. Um, that's that would be my recommendation. All right, you've given us all kinds of tips and goodies. How can our audience help you, Jim? Well, uh, just play the game and, and give us feedback. Um, let's see. So we are, we're on uh, Instagram um, at Halos and Sins. We're on Facebook, um, facebook.com slash Halos and Sins. Um, come to our website, sign up for email uh, updates. And we have many updates with the Kickstarter. We're going to be doing an um, uh, account feature. We're going to be doing... Um, I want to make sure that as many people as possible can play this game and, and love it like I do. Um, so that one of the very first editions is going to be the LGBTQ uh, edition that's coming out very, that's coming out very soon. Um, we're going to have a solo play edition. We're going to have new decks, levels, and rewards. We're going to have a party edition, a bachelorette edition. Uh, we're going to then do localization, chat feature, a reminders feature. Um, and then we're going to, we have, we have a lot, of, we have a lot planned. Fantastic. All right. We'll leave links in the chat as well for the podcast. Last question, Jim, you've been a trooper here getting through this. If we looked into your closet, now this is a fun question. So whatever you want to share that's in your closet, but we're interested okay. <laughs> in which pair of shoes or boots, other footwear that mm -hmm. best personifies your personality. Describe that 
footwear to us and why your personality is represented by that pair of shoes or boots or whatever it is. Okay. Um, the footwear that I would choose to describe myself would probably be running shoes or tennis shoes. They have a lot of, um, um, they're multi-purpose and they're pretty much good in any, every situation. Um, and that kind of links back to, um, I've essentially had to wear like six different hats, you know, game designer, uh, developer, CEO, uh, uh, you know, uh, manager. And it's just, it's, it's, so I kind of, I kind of feel like that that versatility really translates well to, uh, to my journey on this, uh, on this path. So. And you're doing a lot of running, right? Don't stop running around. Uh, yeah, seriously. Oh man. It's yeah. There's a, there's a lot that goes into it. So, but I have really good people working, uh, working for me and, um, it's, it's only going to get better. And, um, I'm really looking forward to this Kickstarter coming out, uh, and getting a support and getting new features out there to all right. So listeners, you heard from Jim Neist today, founder of Halos and Sins. So if you want to level up and kind of have a little extra fun in the bedroom or wherever else you have your fun with your partner, or as we heard, even on your own with some new opportunities coming up there, take a look at Halos and Sins. Thanks so much, Jim, for being on the show today. Oh, thanks so much for having me. It was really a pleasure. If you're looking for the app, you can find it on Amazon. And how about that fantastic intro by Touch Circle?